gamers all around the flat universe. Today, we're doing a season two English guide how to play. So, uh, what am I gonna do in this video is next. I'm gonna teach you a build order, a new build order. Uh, I'm gonna give you an overview of how to play against each sieve at the end of the build order. And I'm just gonna explain a little bit how to play it, what is this good for, and what's the difference between this guide and the season one guide that I made. First thing I wanna say is the season one guide is still viable. Some of these guides, I'll be remaking all eight guides for all eight sieves for season two. Some of the guides are still usable today. For example, English, not much has changed in terms of their economy. So the uh, guide where you open 2-2-2 two, 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 and then you go into fuel pressure is still good. What I'm going to teach you today is how to castle rush with English. And it's a pretty good build. I use it. I've been testing around with it. And uh, let's get into it. Uh, the start is something that if you played English from the guide from the season one, um, if you play that build, then you're going to be familiar with the opening, which is already great for you. You're going to do the same 2-2-2 two, two, two opening, and we're going to get the fast wheelbarrow. Why fast wheelbarrow? Well, we're going to go into the long macro game, and once we hit castle, we want to be able to make a bunch of units and continuously fight and make more units, so we won't have time for a wheelbarrow. So if you're going to play a long-term game, you might as well get wheelbarrow straight away and get value uh, along the way. So we're gonna do two on food, two on wood, two on gold, and build a house where the gold is. And once the next villager, aka seventh villager, comes up, uh, you will build mill with that villager, kinda in the back, not on bears, okay? You're, you don't need bears at all, with English. Um, one question that I get very often on Twitch, recently we had a lot of changes with scouts. Um, some sieves you can still and should go two scouts. Some sieves you go one scout. Uh, for English specifically, I think one scout for this build is more than enough because you're not relying on doing damage, so you don't necessarily need to deny sheep. And scouts now take 25 seconds to build, so it will delay your castle by quite a bit. So here I go with one scout um, because, again, you don't need a lot of sheep. You're going to have a bunch of farms, so it's not the end of the world if you don't get too many sheep. Um, and then your timing is also not in feudal, it's a little bit later, so you'll have time to kind of catch up with the economy with your opponent and uh, attack them later on when they gotta go on deer or bears or whatever. <clears throat> so, um, you're gonna go up to eight villagers on food, and once the eighth villager comes out, which is the next one, you're gonna send that one onto the gold, and you're gonna keep three on gold for quite a while. I'm gonna speed it up a little bit. And every time you have enough wood to build a farm, which is 37 wood, you're just going to start building farms around this mill. And obviously, the moment you have 50 wood and 150 gold, you're going to start your wheelbarrow. So now you can see I have 23 wood. Next time this one, this uh, Wayman delivers, I'm going to start another farm. And there's that villager going to the gold. There we go, boom, and you're gonna slowly build up your farm economy so that you're not relying on like going around on the barriers around the map and, and trying to get that. Um, now there's two landmark options actually with this build. Uh, a lot of people think that Abbey of Memes is a meme, but it's actually not a bad landmark uh, if you're doing this build, if you're rushing castle. But I will strongly advise, uh, you'll see me also like, I started Abbey of Kings and I was like, no, I should teach you the other one. Uh, because basically the build order is the same, except Abbey of Kings, you need to be a little bit more experienced with this build and you need to know what you're doing, uh, because you can get to castle with no units, kind of like HRE, if you identify that you're getting pushed and you can defend with a tower. So here you'll see I'll start Abbey of Kings and I cancel and I go uh, uh, council hall, which I would advise you to do. Uh, go council hall until you learn how to do this build. Let me cancel again. Until you learn how to do this build properly and you feel confident enough that you don't need units to get to castle. So I'm going to be aging up with two villagers, not three, not four, two, uh, because you're not you're not rushing to finish this council hall. You don't get anything if the council hall finishes faster. So just age up with two. It's a good amount. It's not going to delay your economy too much. And 
the moment you start your age up, you will pull four more from food, from uh, sheep here, onto the wood for a total of six on wood, and you're going to have that for a while. The, the reason why we want to have six on wood right now is because we want to keep making farms. I'm going to put a tower on the gold, and in case you're getting all in, you can you will have some wood to create longbows, and you'll have wood for houses, and, and so on and so forth. Now, if you decide to go... You know, you play this build and you decide you want to try Abbey of Kings. The way you defend any feudal push is the way you defend with HRE uh, when I did the Season 1 guide. You would put a tower on your gold, your food is under your TC, your wood line is safe. So the only thing you need to defend is gold. You would put a tower, you would get 50 stone to upgrade the tower, and you would go straight to castle. Now, this is without any units. So again, uh, you know, caution, danger. Only do it once you feel confident, but um, if you're not, go Council Hall, and if you scout any all-in, like the opponent is adding production buildings, what you can do is you can always pull off of, pull the workers off of gold onto the wood and just spam longbows and defend. Not many people all-in English because their TC uh, shoots a lot faster than other TCs. And also they have Network of Castles uh, Aura, which also increases attack speed. So you're not going to get all in as much as HRE does. So you should be fine. But in case you get all in, just make sure you have pretty much same or similar amount of workers on wood and food. And then you spam longbows. If they're going knights, you can also go for spearmen. But most likely you won't need it. If you get a good number of longbows, you can just blast the, uh, the knights. And make sure you get a tower. Uh, whichever way you go, whether you go with Council Hall or Abbey of Kings, uh, I would suggest to, uh, even before these three farms, if you want, you can just add a tower with one villager and slowly build it up to make sure you don't lose any villagers. And if your villagers are mining on this side like this, just build a tower right here. Uh, I would say if you're going Council Hall, you don't need to upgrade the tower. The tower is more for vision and just to give you attack speed buff. Uh, but if you are uh, going with Abbey of Kings, definitely upgrade tower just in case. Uh, one cool thing uh, that you can do with your longbows if you are getting pushed by, you know, French knights or Rus knights or horsemen, whatever. What you can do is you can put two longbows facing like this way, two longbows facing that way, and then you can throw the uh, the, the 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 spike things. So then it's going to be a lot harder for your opponent to engage into because every time they go in, they're going to get stunned. Uh, so it's a good way to protect your uh, villagers. Now, as you can see here, I'm still adding on to the farms. My food economy is doing great. And again, this is all safe food income, um, which is very nice. And you can see, I'm not even going for these berries. I'm just going to add another mill close to my TC, like this. And I'm going to start making um, farms there. So again, six on wood. There's the tower coming up. If you want, you can do it earlier. Like, that depends how fast your opponent is aging up. So I would say after four or five farms, make a tower. And then continue farming with whatever extra wood you get. Rally your workers onto the food. And once your council hall or abbey of memes finish, you want to send those two workers to the gold. And you will send another worker to the gold for a total of six. So you want six on gold, and you want them just mining the whole time. Make sure you build houses, make sure you build farms. And right now the food income is really, really good. It's seven minutes, and we also almost got enough for um, castle, which is a really good time for English that has no... I guess farms are economy boost, but has no other eco boost. It's a pretty good time. And... If you're ever missing gold like this, but you have enough food, you can always force drop off the villagers. Like, just select, drop off like this, and then build. Now, where do you build the King's Palace, and with which workers do you build it with? So, um, as you're aging up to castle, you want to have 10 workers on wood. So, the moment you start aging up, you want to pull the workers from here onto the wood until you have 10. You're going to leave the same amount of 6 on gold. And I like to age up with 8 workers from the farms. Why? Because you have enough food income with these guys to produce villagers. You're not producing any units right now. And 
what you want right now, the most important thing is to have enough wood so you can actually build your production buildings. That's the that's the main thing that you need. And you want to build a monastery, especially if you're first into castle uh, compared to your opponent. You want to build a monastery so you can start getting relics. So there's two ways to play English from here now. Um, one is the style that I personally like, which is go double stable plus monastery and then do some of your eco upgrades like uh, horticulture for uh, food uh, gathering rate. Right? Or you can uh, like throw down two, three barracks. And then if you already have some longbows, for example, if you're getting attacked already, you can go two, three barracks with men and arms upgraded with longbows and you can counter push the opponent. But I personally, like I said, like opening with knights because it gives you a lot of map control. You can deny their relics, you can attack them, you can harass them, and you kind of can turn the tides and start bullying them. Uh, I especially like going uh, two stables into knights if you're going Abbey of Kings. And this is why Abbey of Kings is used, by the way, if you're wondering. Uh, if you go Abbey of Kings into double or even triple stable, you can force fights with your opponent, even if they have Lancers or whatever else. And whenever one of your knights gets low, you can send it back to heal it up. Obviously, if you're like, you know, Silver League, I'm not expecting you to do that level of Micro. So stick to Guns Hole for now. But if you're a bit higher league and, and you have the APM and you have the multitasking, you can always send the low HP knights back next to Abbey of Kings, heal them up, and then you go again, which actually saves you insane amounts of resources in the long run. So here we go. We're starting this and now you'll see uh, as my workers are chopping, I'm going to add the first stable and then the second stable. And the way it works out, look at the timing. Boom, double stable. It's going to finish pretty much at the same time as my castle timing. And you should have close to enough wood to start your monastery as well. Look at that. Boom. And I'm about to have enough wood for the monastery. You can insta fire up two knights uh, with this build order. And once the villagers are done building King's Palace, uh, you just send them back to food. Now, where do you build King's Palace? I forgot to mention that. Um, I personally like to build it not too far away from my TC. If you're under no pressure, you can build uh, your King's Palace here. Because then you will be rallying King's Palace onto the gold. And you're going to rally your main TC onto the food. So... You, the workers don't have to run because now if I want to rally my uh, TC onto the gold there's a lot more travel time so basically wh wherever you're going to rally your king's palace on which resource that's where you want to put it next to but if you're getting pushed or you know if you're not sure if you can finish it here just make it in between farms it's going to act as a garrison point if you ever get raided and you can also build another layer of farms here layer of farms here or you can even uh, gather berries if for some reason you don't have enough wood or you don't have enough farms. So that's something to consider. Perfect case scenario, you do want to build it next to gold. Because from now on, you're going to have one TC rallied onto the gold and one TC rallied onto the food. What you're going to be using with wood is you're going to keep building farms, keep growing your economy. And you can even like, you know, build a tower here, tower there for map control. What I also like to do, once you have like, let's say 25 on food and you have like 15, 20 on gold, I like to start mining some stone just to throw it on a keep because English can be a little bit sketchy in castle. So you can throw it on a keep like around here just to cover your whole base and give you a, a defense point. You can start walling off. That's what the 10 workers on wood are, just to do those things, whether it's adding more production, blacksmith or, or you know, whatever. Just make sure you're using your wood. Uh, once the monastery finishes, start collecting the relics, and once the knights finish, send them across the map and do some harassment. Now, like I said, it's completely fine if you go double or triple barracks into men at arms if you're more uh, comfortable with infantry or you know you don't you don't know how to harass as well with knights. That's also fine. It's not a big deal. It's very important just to know how to balance your economy and kind of what your goal is. Feudal Age, your goal is to survive, identify if you're getting all in, and get to castle as fast as possible. Obviously, if you're getting Omega all in and you have a council hall, like I said, just make a bunch of longbows and just defend. Uh, you don't need to rush it. Once you defend it, you can slowly uh, go to castle. But the good thing is, like I said, 
uh, compared to HRE, you will not get all in too much as English, uh, where HRE gets all in all the time. So what is your goal as English in general? Well, in the perfect case scenario, you want to go to Imperial because that's where English is the strongest. And once you do get to Imperial, you'll have gold income from farms as well as food income. So you're going to be way less reliant on the map to get your resources, like even if you're walled off or, or you know closed off on your side of the map, if you manage to get to Imperial, you'll be uh, more than fine because you'll have that gold income. If you're going Mass Knights, by the way, if you face a lot of spears, if you have Council Hall, you can just start making some longbows so you can snipe the spearmen. Uh, if you're playing Knight versus Knight, uh, you can add either Barracks and go Spearman Knight or continue making Knights and add more stables. Again, that is completely up to you what you want to do with it. That is pretty much for the build order. Now let's do a quick rundown on how do you play against each specific Civ or just a general idea uh, of how to play each matchup. English is English is a matchup that you should never really die in because you're playing, I mean it's a mirror matchup, right? So English versus English, you're playing with the same units. So for example, if your opponent is not rushing Castle, he's just trying to all in you, if you just make longbows and he makes longbows, you will have more because you're defending and his longbows will be going across the map. And then you slowly enter into um, into castle that way. I've also had games where I just went Abbey of Kings. I built stables, I made like three horsemen to kill their longbows and I just went straight into castle. Uh, you can try that as well. But in general, you shouldn't struggle in a mirror uh, dying to all ends. It's like I said, identify what your opponent is doing. Is he making longbows? You make longbows. Or if you're feeling confident, go up your means. Uh, versus Mongols, you will most likely not be rushed uh, because English villagers can uh, shoot and you can defend the tower rushes really easily. And by the way, English versus English, unit comp depends on you and the opponent. Like I can't say like always go this, you know, this comp or always go knights or always go this. Like if the opponent is pushing you with, you know, spearman longbow, uh, if you hit castle, it's better idea to go into men-at-arms, right? But if the opponent went horseman longbow, when you hit your castle, it's better to go knights. So you kind of have to identify which unit in that situation would be the best, but you do want to go men-at-arms or knights in castle. Versus Mongols, like I said, you're probably not going to get tower rushed. And if you do the castle build correctly and you don't take any damage, a lot of Mongols open with horsemen, so that's something to be uh, aware of. And if your plan in this matchup is to go into men at arms, what you can do is you can open it with a couple of spearmen plus a tower on gold just to make sure you're safe. Um, I think English has a pretty good advantage once you start castle because of you get an extra TC, so your worker count will keep increasing and you will have way more workers than your opponent. The weakness in that matchup for you um, is that they can do a massive push with siege in. Um, in castle and they can try overwhelm you with less economy so that's something you need to be aware of uh, i would also say that uh depending on how the map goes raiding mongols is always good because they don't have walls uh but if you're getting like super pushed with siege you know just try to maybe make your own siege get a castle up and kind of slow down their push especially if you see that they're researching like siege engineering uh once they hit castle so they can make siege on the field because once you get to Imperial, this matchup should be pretty easy for you. Uh, Mongols is not like the greatest civ in Imperial, while English is probably the best or second best. Uh, versus French, same thing. Um, I personally love to rush Castle as fast as possible, with least amount of units as possible. Because then if you go Abbey of Kings and you go for Knights, you will basically have stronger Knights. But not only that. You know, they can heal their knights, well, you can also heal yours. And uh, Abbey of Kings healing heals really, really fast. All you gotta do is out micro them. And the best part is, because your knights are so much stronger, you shouldn't be losing knights left and right, because it's gonna take a lot more time for him to kill yours than uh, vice versa. Again, if you're more comfortable with barracks, you can open with a couple of spearmen, you know, just to have them on your gold, maybe even upgrade tower, because French is probably the most aggressive sim. Other than that, if you fight under your TC, you should win because of the uh, network of castles buff and your TC being stronger. So just make sure you identify what the French player is doing. If they're going for stone and they're getting second TC, just go straight to castle. 
you'll get your second DC when you age up. And then the advantage you have is Castle Knights and you're able to pick up the relics. Um, against Rus, Rus is in a way plays out like a weaker French. Um, the diff because their knights can't heal, but they also have knights like French. And I guess the one difference between French and Rus is Rus can rush castle really fast and then go like men at arms or start to pick up the, the relics. And if that's the case, even if they get castle first, if you get, you know, castle 30 seconds later, if they go like men at arms or something and try to like cheese you while you're not castle yet, you'll get some knights out and you'll be more than fine. Uh, late game, uh, English has advantage over Mongols, French and Rus because of trebuchet longbows and infinite gold from the farms there are sometimes possibility of a Rus player going for boar and then doing the the four archer rangers boar all in and versus those all ins you just gotta make units and try to survive like i said it's all about scouting it's extremely important whenever you're playing any any build with with any sieve that requires you to skip units or rush castle or go to tc or whatever scouting is everything uh versus holy roman empire this is one of the harder matchups uh and the problem with this matchup is if you rush castle and they rush castle they're gonna get there first and they're gonna take the relics so you will be at a disadvantage so my advice is if you are playing against hre uh preferably use the season one build or some kind of build where you're more aggressive because if you both say, I'm going to go castle and I'm going to go castle, they're going to hit it first and they're going to yoink all the relics. Even though you have 2TC, you're going to have a hard time basically fighting against their knights with yours because they just have so much more gold income uh, than you. So this is uh, one of the harder matchups, I would say. Next one is Delhi. Uh, also rough matchup. Uh, HRE and Delhi are probably the hardest matchup for English if played correctly. Luckily in uh, lower leagues Delhi is not really played too much and Delhi requires very unique kind of you know play style in order to be effective against English so you should be fine like I don't think you will be uh, you'll be struggling. Uh, I would advise you to just get to castle and start getting knights and start harassing their economy you know disable their sacred sites the usual and the longer the game goes in Delhi versus English you're gonna have way bigger advantage and Delhi these days is a very not necessarily all-in sieve but it's a very committed sieve and if you don't pick up all the relics and sacred sites you're gonna struggle so that's where your strength lies even though in feudal Delhi will probably take over the whole map uh, Chinese uh, versus H3 just try try the season one build that I did uh, try the season two build, see what works better for you. I don't know how fast you can uh, hit your castle compared to your opponents. Maybe they're, you know, not as good as hitting castle with Holy Roman Empire, so maybe you have a timing there. I don't know. Uh, you can also wall off their relics if you want uh, to buy yourself more time and to deny some gold from them. Uh, versus Chinese, this is a matchup that um, is usually China goes for you know second TC and Song Dynasty. If that's the case, you're going to be cruising till castle and you'll basically get your second TC up and they will have two TC Song Dynasty. But the advantage that you have is being able to pick up the relics. So if you manage to pick up three or four or five relics, you're still going to be in a decent spot. And one good thing about uh, English compared to Chinese, you have your farms so much earlier actually against any sieve, you have your farm so much earlier that you don't need to go out on the map to get food. And that is the advantage of English. Uh, to be able to just sit in base and not be harassed by your opponents because you're always close to towers or, or TCs and so on and so forth. While Chinese and all these other sieves have to move around the map and that's where you want to harass with your knights. Um, late game, late game, I feel like it can go either way. Because the fire, the new fire lancers that they recently buffed uh, are quite a bit better, but it doesn't mean like the, the game is over. I think either sip can win. Uh, you have infinite gold. They have um, well, pretty much infinite gold as well because of taxes. So it kind of goes down to who is playing better. So main focus versus China, I would say, is to just get castle faster than they do because they will be focusing on economy and then try to secure relics. Maybe get a couple of towers in the map, upgrade them with Springled Upgrade, just that vision, 
and then just raid as much as you can. <clears throat> and the last one is Ab Acid Dynasty. Abbasid Dynasty, uh, English is uh, pretty good into Abbasid actually. All the sieves that have decent matchups into English or that can do well are either the sieves that can be very aggressive or sieves that can rush castle and Abbasid can do either. They can't really be super aggressive and feudal uh, or at least they can but it's not very good and they can't rush castle either. So you'll be able to get to castle faster uh, and even if they go for some kind of unit comp you know, they can only go like Horseman, Spearman, Archer, which you can defend under your TC super, super easy. And then going into Castle or Imperial, um, Imperial will have a big advantage. In Castle, it's very similar to Mongols because they can go for uh, big siege pushes, which is something you should be careful of. And one of the best ways to stop these massive pushes in Castle, whether it's a, a siege push from Abbasid and Mongols or just mass amounts of units, is just getting a keep down in front of your base because that's gonna force them to go trebuchets and if they go trebuchet they have to build siege workshop they have to build a trap that's 500 wood 250 gold each and then they're not making other stuff so you basically buy yourself a lot of time to get your units out and no matter which production buildings you open in castle whether you open stables or barracks i've recently found that actually massing men at arms uh plus horsemen works really really well with english uh, late game, you can go hand cannoneers, men at arms, uh, because you won't struggle with gold. But men at arms in castle with the armor upgrade and just the castle upgrade are really, really strong. They're really, really tanky, especially if you get the armor upgrades. So get a lot of barracks, get a lot of farms, and just spam those men at arms. That is what I got for you today. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below. Like I said, season one guide is viable if you want to play English more aggressive. But if you want to learn a new way to play English, Russian Castle, it's very much viable as well. Maybe it's even better if executed properly. The only third style I would say that English has is going second TC. And I've been testing it, uh, like second TC in Feudal. And I've been testing it quite a bit recently. And I just feel like the Russian Castle is just better in almost every single situation so there you go if you're watching on youtube thank you so much for watching the next guide i will be doing is most likely french and the guide that i'll be doing with french is the 2tc that is now the meta in pretty much every matchup uh french players don't really go 1tc anymore they always go 2 while being aggressive at the same time so yeah if you're watching on youtube have a great day night morning thank you for watching for watching on twitch let's keep going